How does vinyl playback work? Whew, that's going to be a tough one to <laughs> try to explain with mere words. But I thought this, I, I'd give a stab at it. Um, the question comes from OB in Thailand. Hi, Paul. I own a turntable and all of the bells and whistles that come along with owning one. I guess like cleaners and stuff. Uh, but one aspect of the turntable I just can't quite understand is playback, specifically the part where the stylus comes into contact with the record. I understand that the two sides of the groove and the record are producing the sound. What I don't understand is how can a groove be able to pick up all of the different sounds on a vinyl since it only picks up the grooves? I guess what I'm trying to say is it seems to me that there are only a finite amount of sound that the grooves can actually play back. However, this clearly is not the case, obviously, and further mind-boggling is how it is able to reproduce an entire orchestra with but one groove. Wow. What's fascinating to me about this question is as I stand back and look at it, it is rather daunting. Perhaps nowhere near as daunting as how the hell a DAC works, because that's just a box, right? And magic happens. But this, this is different. I mean, you've got plastic, and this it's almost like magic in a way because here you have this black vinyl thing with micro grooves that, heck, I couldn't see it with my glasses on. I can see the little dividing lines. And yet comes out of here orchestras, rock bands. How is it possible that that is captured and that it can do all of that? I think this is a classic conundrum that all human beings face with trying to wrap our heads around complex issues. Imagine trying to figure out how we evolved. I mean, it seems like it's impossible that we could have gone from little, you know, multiple cell things over bazillions of years into that, but clearly evolution is real and it works. We see it happening today. It's going on. We are continuing to evolve. And on the short end of things, you can kind of see it. You can kind of see that if every, you know, uh, if the vast majority of people who did one thing or another wound up dying, well, then they wouldn't pass their genes on and, and likewise, right? But try to understand it at an even or, or a base level or how, how our DNA, those little strands you see of DNA, make me as opposed to you almost unfathomable or how a computer can actually think. I believe as human beings, we can only wrap our heads around a little bit of complexity. We can only look down at, the, at, at these minor levels. So let's try that for a moment with the understanding that likely we're not going to be able to grasp the whole thing. So what do we know? We know that that turntable and that needle are capable of picking up all the frequencies our ear is capable of hearing. So I can hear from, well, I can't anymore, but at one time I might have been able to hear from say 20 hertz up to 18,000 hertz. Uh, probably now I'm down to, I don't know, 10, 11 K. I, I don't really know, I haven't checked and because our brains compensate for all that. And I still hear just great. but. We know that if I put a sine wave, which is just an undulating electronic signal, into the groove of a record, 
as this thing is spinning and the needle is being dragged through that, the needle is moving back and forth that is imitating the sine wave. So you picture the sine wave going up and down, up and down, right? Now picture that same needle as the thing is spinning in that groove and the groove is, is, is zigzagging in the exact same shape that that sine wave is. So the needle is going, it's literally moving exactly in sync with that sine wave. And as that sine wave gets higher and higher in frequency, say from a oh, uh, hundred times a second to a thousand times a second, it's moving faster and faster and faster and faster and faster to the point where we can't see it anymore. And when you look at that, you can't see it move that fast. Our eyes are, what, what are we, I don't remember what we can see, but it, I mean, we're fooled by 24 frames a second, right? When you see a movie, that movie is running at 24 frames a second, and you would think that's continuous motion, when in fact, it's a series of still pictures that move past our eye at 24 times a second, right? There's another complex thing. How the hell does that work? Well, you know, you can see flip picture books and you can kind of get the idea how it works. This, while continuous, is the same sort of thing. As it's moving 33 times per second, there's a groove that that needle is following and it can go faster and it can go slower. Now, let's accept the fact that an orchestra, at least the parts that we're interested in, can only play within the range of human hearing. So if on the one hand, in its simplest form, we can understand that I can put wiggles in the grooves that'll make the needle move really fast, and really slow, and everywhere in between, and we understand that an orchestra only can have the same frequency of wiggles, otherwise we can't hear it, so it's irrelevant, then I could just very simply say, that's how it works. Because while orchestras don't play single sine waves, they play many sine waves. The, and here's, here's the part where you're gonna struggle with a little bit, okay? Because again, our brains have trouble with complex with complexity, and so we like to ascribe magic and all this stuff. It, well, it couldn't have happened that way simply because I can't understand it. I get it, I get it, but it is understandable. So without ascribing you know, this mystery to it, if we understand that we can do simple, then imagine what the waveform looks like for complex. So instead of an orchestra, let's just imagine two people singing. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, and we have harmony, right? When you look at that, instead of that wave being a simple sine wave, that sine wave has other wiggles on it at the same time. So picture it as kind of a jaggy sine wave. And that jaggy bit is the accumulation of those two waves. Okay, so one sine wave is doing this, and the other one's doing something a little bit different. And when we combine them together, the aggregate of it is looking different than the sine wave. And the more voices, violins, cellos, whatever we add to it, that sine wave, that waveform begins to look more and more unlike just something pure. But it's really no different to the needle. It doesn't care because it can move, we know it can move within this band very easily, right? Just like our eardrum can move only within, it's a single thing and it's only moving like that, right? So we know that it can do that, so it's just moving in a much more complicated, jaggy way as opposed to smooth of a sine wave. And that is how we play an orchestra on a groove. So I'm sure it's not just, ah! But at least sometimes, drip by drip, you get a little bit closer to understanding. At least I hope so. I did my best. Okay. Thanks for watching. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye.